kicking left of screen or to the legend stand in after their skipper Harvey Hooper won the toss. It'll be Flockhart and O'Keefe in the ruck to get things started. And Flockhart will have the first possession. It was a confused one. In the end, a kick that went up and down a metre. Green camped at the bottom of the footy, Sam Draper-like. And a free kick in the back to go to the port skipper. Harvey Hooper, best and fairest. The last two seasons, 17 JJ Liston trophy votes. Sends it deep. Young has got off his man, gets a fist on it. There's a hold, a free, and it will go to the Blues. And Michael Lewis will get a chance to set the ground up for the Baggers. One of the more experienced players in this lineup, been in the program now for a few years, Michael Lewis. Goes to the wing for McMahon. Carl did really well. Gets wide out the back, who was impressive last week. Speaking getting out the back, Moyers got on the end of this. Drops the mark, has to pick it up. Goes himself. Opening goal to the Blues. Great ball movement, wasn't it? Really quick, and that's how they got some goals last week. Fords work high up the ground and double back into the space. Beautiful kick. Aston Moyer did his, his best to almost muck that up with a drop mark, but he kept it in front of him. Had the time and class to finish. It's really quick transition, two kicks from the back pocket all the way through for a goal on the truck assist replay. All the space out the back. Moyer did his best to nearly muck that up with a drop mark, but he kept it in front of him and a classy finish in the end. Number of Blues fresh off yesterday's winning trip to Marvel Stadium. What a third quarter they produced against the Giants. Watching on. Lock out the tap. Green hunting after it. Clash of bodies. Ma. Handball. Volleyball from Monaghan. Kick will come forward from Prout, who's back into the team. Watson. It's a key matchup to get right on McMahon, who's off three last week. Heard in game 50. Just queuing a lead to space. Gowles was trapped behind and virtually shoved Lewis into the mark in the end. He started really aggressively, Lewis. Got the free kick just before and that intercept mark. He's got a big job on Gowles this afternoon. Thought about pulling the trigger into the corridor. It'll go down the line. Off hands, Hooper hunts it on the deck. Pressure came from Monaghan. White's handball. Yeah, that tackle. That tackle just lingered on Hooper. Great start to the season. Once again, Harvey Hooper. Averaging 28 touches in his first three games. Super Hooper. Bins. Yeah, and, and nine clearances again. To Moyer. Speaking of Super. Oh, he's got two. That's one heck of a start for Ashton. Well, the piece of play miss that needs celebrating and reviewing is Jackson Bins. The vol volleying that from about 30 centimetres off the ground into the hands of Moyer. You can't get more efficient than this. Two inside 50s. They've only had nine disposals on the truck assist replay. The volley from Jackson Bins. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Top, top Bins. <laughs> and uh, Moyes, he's kicked two in the first three minutes. Interesting player, isn't he? 188 centimetres, Ashton Moyer. He kept yeah. in to see what he could be at the next level. Yeah, well, he's versatile. He can play tall and small, and he's got uh, great agility. Free kick, high one. Advantage will be paid to Ma, whose kick was shaded. Ground ball win was really important for McKenzie, showing his experience. Rankin with a rainbow into the hands of Hennis. Of course, spent time with both Footscray and Sandringham at VFL level. A scrubby ball. Blues have got numbers back. Gowers without the mark. Vickers at the drop didn't get the piece of it he was hoping for. Probably should have taken that out in front. And he would have had the mark. Gowers coming off five goals last week. They desperately need him to fire. Again, it was Lewis just getting a hand in. He's been really good defensively so far. 
So Jackson Binns will have it alongside the behind post. Edging ever closer to an AFL opportunity. O'Keefe's his target. Flock out almost. Hennis crunched in the tackle. Green couldn't get effective possession. And away come the Blues again. Ramshaw goes towards Moyer, who's wide hot in the opening stages. He's already kicked two. Chance to set up another here. And here's the running capacity of Bins. He's gone from back pocket to far wing in the blink of an eye. Mills delivers inside 50 for the Blues. Underneath it was wide. It gets to Murkov at the back. It's just the Carlton speed of ball movement that's really troubling the borough at the moment. And the ball getting out of that first layer into the second. So much space in the Blues forward line. Murkov, left hand to it. McComb was stripped by second effort. The long arms of number 45 as Mar Blues vice captain sees it to the line. Alex Chin Cotter back into Carlton's VFL team today. He was managed last week. He had 23 and 5 centre clearances on Good Friday against North. The only of those seven AFL-listed Blues who's seen action at the highest level. McComb bounced off one. Bodywork from Green to Hurd, who slipped the Carl tackle attempt. Stylish left football into the hands of Signorello, who looks inboard. Well, that's bold. space the kick. That's well marked. Barnes, West Australian, spaces his ball to the wing for Rankin. And now there's some overlap for the Borough. Vickers. Puts a hand into Monaghan, finds his left boot. Gowers on the fly. Lewis had his measure again. Scoops it back to Young. Excellent half volley. Great dexterity to get out of traffic. Chincotta. The Blues have done enough to get away. Not quite. Rosman get a hand in. Rankin put the tackling work strongly in on Kuypers. But again, how good's ground Michael? level combat is on Carlton's terms at the moment. Brownie. How good's Michael Lewis's first seven minutes being? It's at boundary side. Andrew McCormack. Well, another week and some more banged up blues. Zach Williams, the good news is, has been cleared of any major achillage damage, so no rupture there. He's still a chance they can take on the Cats this week, but he will be a watch. So too, Jacob Wording, a big corky in that quad, of course. Tom Hawkins awaits with the underfeated Cats. Thanks, Macca. Stubbings inside 50. It's going to be a free kick. Lockie Young, really important. Senior head in this young VFL lineup to come in as captain. Mills to Lewis. He's had a good start. A couple of deliveries to Billy Gowers hasn't done him any favours. And Lewis has been there to pick them off. Rankin. Oh, lovely. Step through the elevator doors. Finds Signorello, who runs to 48 metres, drives towards Gowers. We had a quick look to see where the goalpost was. Couldn't complete the mark. Missed Minus opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's been their best build-up so far this afternoon for the Borough. It's that really important passage of play from Rankin just to slip a tackle, lower the eyes. Jim Cotter be seeking a one-two here with Young. Runs the J curve and then kicks to a two-on-two. -two. O'Keefe trapped in behind. Man to get it done. Kuipers gave it quickly to Mar. Just urging it forward. Oh, look at Nelson. The, space. the Blues are out the back again. And of course, it's Ashton Moyer. Instead of kicking a third, he might turn provider. Lovely end to end stuff. Once again from Carlton McMahon, the beneficiary. Just again, the Borough unable to stop the, the fast, free flowing ball movement of the Blues. And they can just get him out the back. It was a 3v1. Space everywhere. How do they adjust, Browning? Well, it's their defensive position. You can't afford to come up the field and then get turned around back the other way. So they might they might just need to play behind them a fraction and allow them that lead-up mark for 50 metres out. But you can't allow this to go on. Three goals, three boisterous celebrations last Sunday afternoon from the former pie. Something a little bit more subdued as McMahon delivers a third for Carlton. Four inside 50s, three goals. Ruthless efficiency from Luke Power's team for the opening nine minutes.
couple of Borough defenders just caught ball watching, and it only takes a split second for a smart forward to turn your back around and bolt back towards goal. You, you can't allow yourself to get caught ball watching and let your opponent goal side. It's too easy. And that's from a kick-in where there should be sufficient time to set your ground up. A absolutely. So that's going to be something that the Borough need to really get on top of. Hennis tried to get it to McComb, but the Blues will win it again. Ma, oh, beautiful tackle. effort. Great strip from Rossman. Carlton still get it, though. Ferranato dragged off his kick. Still has numbers inside 50 to work towards. White keeps it moving. Oh, towards the pocket, it's going to work. I wonder if he meant that. It didn't look like it, but it works great for Carl. Just There's just too much space inside that Carlton forward line. Players everywhere, and that's the third mark inside 50. It's a clever finisher, Ned Carl. Will step around on the left and kicks Carlton's fourth. What a start from the Blues. Hunting their first win in 2024. Great to have you with us live on 7 Plus, all our seven VFL Sandful and Waffle games every week live on 7 Plus and on demand during the week. You can check out the whole back catalogue. All the best of state league footy around the country on seven plus live and free blues with a flyer danger signs here on the truck assist replay for adam scroblack and the borough and they've just been non-competitive here in the first 11 minutes Hudson, Hudson O'Keefe joins us on the boundary line. Hudson, thanks for your time. That's right, boys. Thanks for having me. Well, this is some sort of start. Four goals in 11 minutes. Where are you getting them? Yeah, we're just... Um, we got some good looks up forward with the boys. Hash and Mar, I think he's kicked two so far. He's really creating a contest for us up forward. Your own development. You've really seemed to have gone to a new level in 2024. What parts of your game are, do you feel are developing fastest? I feel like my ruck craft has really improved over the preseason. Worked really hard with um, Matthew Cruz, our ruck coach, and got some good looks against some big boys like Pido and King at training. So I feel like I've really improved in that area. In an ideal world, what's the split for you between, say, ruck and forward? Where do you think that suits you best? Uh, ideal world, probably I'd say 75% ruck, 25% forward. I like sort of having that look up forward. It's just bringing different parts of my game and adding another string to my bow. And you get to work with Alex Murkoff for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, very pleased to have him back today. He's a, he's a great player and he's, he's done a lot of work to get back here today and hopefully he goes well. I'm um, yeah, really proud of the way he's gone about it. Thanks, Hudson. Appreciate your time. We're Thanks, enjoying your development. Thanks for having me. As Rossman tossed it out to Monica Heard, the borough under siege. Flocker hoping to find someone in red and blue. He did in Vickers, but there's more blues here. And Young goes back with a flight. Takes a strong mark despite the pressure from Conlon. Lockie Young was down in back play momentarily about a minute ago. Carlton Medico's rushed to him, but he waved them off. He's fine, just copped one of the mush. Murkoff with a one hand, tried to dab it forward. Watson, the former docker, along the ground goes Miller. Horrible bounce, Vickers against the line. It won't matter as Prout bundles him over. Where's this going wrong for Port? They're bringing the tackle pressure, aren't they? The Blues, they just can't get their hands on the footy at the moment, the, the Borough. And the Blues are just transitioning it so quick. They, they aren't able to slow them down. It's, it's a bit of a concern, the ease in which they're able to go inside their forward 50 and score. Maybe something here for Port. They can link oh. out. Rourke Smith thunders into Young, but retained possession. But, yeah, he wore it. He's feeling it now, Rourke. He's down on his haunches. Just winded. That, that was a strong contest. That was a big hit. We could hear that from here. Vickers, short to Signorello. Port just need a goal to steady things down here. Bit of time in possession. Bit of composure required. Mills will get there and links up with Lewis. He'll kick it long back towards Rourke Smith, who's still down. Umpire may have to stop play if the ball goes any closer to Carlton's goal. Flockhart, Rossman's kick. Out of bounds, and Rourke Smith still sucking in the big ones. That was in front of you, Andrew McCormack. That was a big hit. Oh, absolutely. You can hear it from here, and he's still down, trying to suck in the big ones. They're going to stop play here. Smart option. Uh, we saw last week the Blues were left a man down as uh, one of their players walked from the field. So, uh, I mean, the rule is a kick and a half within play, and play needs to stop. So yeah. with concussion here, taking no chances, and uh, he's on his feet now. Looks to be sucking him in a bit better now, but uh, obviously they'll put him through the concussion test and do everything they need to do before they clear him to come back on. You just hope it's, he's just winded and not a little 
broken rib. It was a massive contest there. Lockie Young, fair. Nothing wrong with that. He wore the bump courageously, and then as soon as he got rid of the ball, that's that's when he hit the deck. But tough footballer, Rourke Smith. Teammates no more. No. Former dogs. Murkoff down, but Flockhart liked his work so much he ran off with it. Here is Young off his chest. Green wore the contact but was stripped in the Getty tackle. The debutante today. Moya dragged down by Signorello, given full benefit. Getty coughed up the hand pass. Burrell gets some time in their fourth half. So Jess Getty, number 68, making his debut. Played in a premiership for Heidelberg in the Northern Football League last year with Matt Signorello in opposition colours today. A teammate on that occasion, Murkoff, flicked it. Hooper trying to generate something for his team. Tossed to Signorello. Where's the tackle? Bunny hops. Green. Oh, great spot. Lockhart, Sam Green's kick smothered. After Out. it is Barnes, but he was fumbly at the crucial stage. That's an important stop, though, from Hennis. Logan Prout was the man. Goal-saving smother there. Outstanding defensive work. Murkov, another hit out. Ma puts the pressure on. Big hit there on Sam Green. Affected the kick. Means the ball doesn't clear the congestion. They pile in on top. Another stoppage. It's real hunt in Carlton at ground level. Yeah, they're hungry, aren't they? As you would expect. I'd be disappointed that they dropped that game last week. It was there to, to win against the Pies. Murkoff's tap. Hennis tries to spin through. Got boot to ball, but it's going to come back the other way. Logan Prout cuts it off. That's what they're doing really well, their, their back six. Just defending space well. Tom Phillips, so often the case, gets involved as the link man off halfback. Down the line towards Kuypers, who did some good things last week. So you see McMahon's just ducked out the back door, and you, you just can't have eyes at the back of your head. If you're a borough defender, you need to be aware of where your opponent is at all times. Osman's kick was dangerous, but it might work well here because Hooper's managed to pick it off. He then goes to a one-on-one. -on -one. Vickers against Getty. Getty lays the tackle. Look at the numbers arrive for the Blues. It was three on one by the end of that. Gowers comes thundering out. The former Blue takes a couple with him. Signorello can't quite get away from Young. Now he's wrapped up. Ball big, comes out. Big it's, ball to win. It's still there. They pile in once again. Ball up. Michael Lewis wearing Billy Gowers like an absolute glove. Winning every 50-50 contest. Murkoff protected it and then slapped it clear of the blast zone. Paddling his bins. Ranking in hot pursuit. Bins put the step on. Kick a low down. Carl couldn't trap it. Hennis. Rankin came up with the ball. Kick. That's a oh. good aggressive kick that could really open the door here for Barnes. Tap short Signorello. I want to generate some run. Barnes with a 1-2 will launch from beyond the arc. Vickers in the right spot, can walk it in. And the Kyle Vickers fan club enjoyed that. Well, that's the kick from Rankin back into the corridor that opened the field right up on the truck assist replay. They really thought their way through that. Signorella, experienced player, lowered the eyes. And Vickers, he got out the back door. Good, strong hand. So they've seized a little bit of momentum back just with time in possession. Well, no, it's... Since the Carl goal, it's 37 touches to 16 to Port. They've had five of the last six inside 50s. And now pulled a goal back. Margin at 17 points. They've done well. They're trying to be bold with their ball movement back through the corridor as well. He's back doing some run-throughs. Rourke Smith, so that's a good sign. We need him back in the action as soon as possible. It's been a good response here from Port. Feels like they've got their feet underneath them for the first time. Bins. Bounces inside 50. Lovely gather from Carl. Handball not quite so good. Hooper tries to slap to the advantage of Dan McKenzie. Vickers. 
Over the back, can he get there in time? He keeps it alive. Smart. This might work here for Stubbings. Gowers comes out to meet it. McKenzie. Now Stubbings, they've worked this out. Handball popped over the top. Kick inside, comes from Conlon. Here's Barnes again, but he's turned it over. Kicked it straight to Mills. And the Blues can escape here through Phillips. Who's so often the release player. Had a handful of games for Port Melbourne pre-draft. Ramshaw will not step Hooper. Had to wriggle free. Back to Phillips on the left. Monaghan had a bit of trouble trying to grab hold of the Sharon. Phillips' third touch in the sequence. Small pressure on the ball carry now for the Blues. That's Highmore does enough. That's to why they're starting to make Carl. some errors. It's, it's not that fast, free-flowing ball movement we saw in the first six or seven minutes. There's, there's pressure. Halftime score from Piranha Park. Coburg with a three-point advantage. They've had 33 inside 50s to 18 to half time. So oh. maybe not full bang for buck for Jamie Cassidy McNamara's team. Coburg's coach, of course, formerly part of Collingwood's coaching staff. Ramshaw with a spin. Phillips has had a heap of it along that wing in the last couple of minutes. Nelson to Chin Cotter, who will send it deep. Moya against Green. Green met the ball. Kuypers spits it free. White, we saw him clever around goal last Sunday. Similar story again. Classy finish. Will White. Classy little player, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. It's composed. Just a couple last week. He's a classy footballer. Will White kicked a couple of nice goals last week. Nice and composed with ball in hand for only his, his third game of VFL footy on the truck assist replay. Thought his way through that perfectly. Opportunist small forward. Always in demand. The youngster from South Warrnambool making a good fist of his fledgling VFL career. Can this be where it starts for Port Melbourne? Green the handball to Gowers. This time turns deliverer inside 50 and finds Felix Flockhart. Takes some responsibility here. If, if well and truly within range. It's been a tough start for the Borough. Limited opportunities up forward. Just allow your defenders to set up structurally and have a shot. You can hear the instructions from the bench about the setup. Both teams trying to get the numbers right. In case this comes slingshotting back Flockhart the only way that's coming back is via the umpire magnificent strike of the Sharon why would you be looking to pass it off when you can kick like that what a goal perfect shape on that Why would you be looking to pass it off when you can strike the ball like that? Really important centre clearance win. The truck assist replay and Flockhart from right on the 50. That magnificent. Is, that is magnificent, the word for it. Don't see a lot of goals kicked from that position at Icon Park. That is a beauty. He's Port Melbourne's highest ranked player on the ground so far, and that is a sight to warm Borough Hearts. Rock Smith returns to the fray. O'Keefe got it down. Hooper fighting for it. Support now comes McComb. Miller shaped it neatly. Signorello with a clutch of options. One of them is to point to shoot. And unfortunately, the former Crow misses right. He had some teammates as well streaming past him. He took responsibility himself. Much better from the borough. Yeah, winning some clearances now. 
And they've stabilised the scoreboard. It's just 16 points after getting jumped early. Blues kicking the first four of the game. Lockie Young, dangerous kick. Everything under pressure at the moment for Carlton. Bins tries to lay the tackle on Curry, but he got the ball moving again. Hooper's kick inside, not great. Pressure on Nelson, and he did it well. Navigated through traffic, gets it to White, and now the Blues can attack. White, nice step, got around Rossman. Delivery inside 50. McMahon flew over the top. Moyes already kicked a couple. Turns inside. Fumbles the football. Draws a crowd. Pops the handball. Ma attacks the goal face and or Tom oh, Phillips. A good wrestle going on too. Gives it off play. to Lafroy. Goal, Carlton. You watch the footy. I'll watch the fight. Keep going on. It's just a work rate thing. You can see the, the Carlton players streaming forward with confidence. Kicking efficiency. Carlton 84% from 44 kicks. Port Melbourne 53% from 46 kicks. Therein lies the show thus far. Yeah. Not a huge difference in most of the other numbers. They're just streaming forward with such confidence. You can just see Carlton jumpers everywhere inside their forward 50. Truck assist replay. Good unselfish football. He wasn't having a shot on goal. Kicked it to a dangerous spot. Centered it and Lafroy joins the list of goal kickers. Six straight. There's the skirmish post goal. It was lively. For Lafroy who kicked three in round two against North and then had just the three handballs last week against the Pies. Another clearance here, though. Gowers into the action to Josh Green. Steaming towards it was Conlon. It couldn't meet his hands as he throws Chincotta yeah, dangerously under the current terms. He, he, you could tell there was some frustration in that tackle. He should have taken that mark. It was lace out. Chincotta, Smith. This would give Port an enormous boost. Smith is back. Well, if that doesn't inspire your teammates, nothing will. On his haunches, barely 10 minutes ago, Rock Smith, another forward half turnover, and this time could put the full stop on it. So, Brownie, we'll take a look at this Alex Ginkotta call to go. So, track assist replay, the umpire calls play on here, which forces him into a kick that he probably didn't want to take, and Rourke Smith back on the field. He's tough, he's courageous, sells a bit of candy. It looked a little bit unorthodox on the right foot, but a much-needed goal in what has been a free-flowing contest here at Icon Park. Chincotta's off his line there, isn't he? He was off his line. Yep, yep. took a step sideways. That was a right call. Back to 16 points, entertaining opening term. And winning some clearances, two out of the middle of the borough. Stevens was clipped high. The Blues will get this one. Oh. Away he scurries. Direct. Moyer, but at the back, reading at best, was Kuypers. Did some good things last week, Blake Kuypers. Good below his knees. Interesting prospect at 197 centimetres, Brownie. Yeah, he's, a, he's a good height, isn't he? You can take marks like that. Want to be mobile at 197. It's an interesting well, package, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. Really is. So, caught the eye last week and can line up for his first of the afternoon. It was all a little bit too easy coming out of the middle there from that free kick. There was no real pressure on the, on the ball carrier at all. Former volleyballer came through the Victorian junior ranks. He's got something about him, Blake Kuypers. Blues get another. Seven straight.
Naj, you've had a long and distinguished career as a player manager. When AFL recruiters are looking at 195 plus guys, what are the big ticket items that they're looking at? Clearly athleticism, but then game sense. And that's perhaps been the thing that Blake Kuypers has been catching from how little football he had played. He was spoken about in draft discussions coming through the Danny Nong Stingrays in 2019. Did play for Vic Country. Might all start coming together at VFL level. Miller punts this forward. Lemmy not the bounce he wanted. Flockhart tries to tap it free. Three on three. And again, it's Carlton with that layer outside. Getty smothered by Gowers. That's a good stop. And sometimes clubs do use the mid-season draft to almost just warehouse a, a young guy who may not be ready yet, but they look at him and go, you know what? Maybe. Let's just get him on our list. Yeah, sometimes. I guess now, mid-season rookie draft, SSP. We've got more flexible, as flexible list rules as we've ever had, that a player like Blake Kuypers can just boil away yeah. in VFL and even local football for a period of time, as he's done with Rosebud in the Mornington Peninsula League. And then, as a now 23-year-old, be considered ready. Murkov got it free. Popping the handball. Nelson not sold what he would have liked from Archie Stevens. A late opportunity for Green, who kicks it into Nelson. I don't even think Nelson <laughs> had to move for that. McComb, Ramshaw hanging off him. They're conceding ground here, the borough. Watson, tackled by Carl. And how efficient have Carlton been to have 10 inside 50s yep. to Port Melbourne's 15, Even though and they're, they're going at 70%. And out tackling the Borough too, 18 tackles to 10, so clearly winning on the scoreboard and possession, but they're out hunting them too. 10 inside 50s for seven straight goals for Carlton. Signorello, that's better delivery for Gowers. That's what he's been lacking in the opening he likes term. To wheel and go. And he does from 55, low and flat, tries to get over the top of Lemmy, who read it well. He just, he just had Angus Curry leading straight at the ball carry then. Billy Gowers and missed him. Lafroy was looking for White, but it was cut off by Hennis to Rossman. And that's perfect. <laughs> Flock out again. You know, he should have the confidence up. This is going to be a much easier set shot than the one he had earlier. And another interesting big man, young big man battle, Flockhart versus Lemmy. Lemmy's on an AFL list. Flockhart isn't. The sort of battle that a recruiter would be looking at. 22, 202 centimetres. Very agile. It's been a production line out of State League football over the last few years for these sorts of guys. So these sort of moments for Felix Flockhart, worth more than just six points. An opportunity to catch the eye. Get your name on some whiteboards. From 45 out, his first kick was perfect. Oh, so is that. And so is that. Jeez, he hits it crisp, doesn't he? Both of his set shots today have been perfect. And in an era when 200 plus forwards are in vogue, 200 centimetre plus forwards. He's got a, a nice approach. Well, it used to be Paul Salmon was considered just a one-off freak when he came through in the 80s. People are like, we'll never see a player like him again. Well, most clubs have them now, and if they don't, they're looking for them. And Brownie, a taller can genuinely go forward and play as a tall. And what we've seen here, he's got some forward yeah, He craft. does, and he, he's covering the ground well. I mean, Lemmy's a good athlete, and he's, he's running him around. He, he clearly has a really good understanding of his set shot routine because he, he's, he's just hit them magnificently and confidently. James Heard watching his son Tom run around this afternoon for Port Melbourne. Here's Hooper. Inside 50. Oh! And another opportunity Strength here. Strength in the contest as well. This He's, is Jimmy Miller. He identified the drop of the ball where he wanted to protect the space. It was, a, it was a nice kick to the favoured side there from the skipper, Hooper. Look at him just... Works Lemmy off the line. If you've given up seven straight goals in a quarter of football, you'd expect you might be in some trouble on the scoreboard. Kick this, it's a ten-point game. Stabbed at that. Miss it, and it's a little more. Yeah, they're the goals you've got to kick when you're chasing a... A Jimmy, deficit. Jimmy Miller back for his second spell in the VFL. Work to be here for Getty. 
Chincotta's second kick. Better one to take ground, try and put it to the advantage side of Kuypers. Sweeping on it was Carl. Shut down by Stubbings. Heard tried to shove his way through. It stays in. Stubbings squeaked a kick forward. Handy bounce for Barnes. Getty had him immediately. Guy Barnes making his way over to try his hand in the VFL after splitting his time between the Waffle Seniors and Reserves with Peel Thunder after some time with South Fremantle previously. Hooper hunting for it, got it into the fingertips. His kick was shaded off the boot though. 11 goals in the opening term, which has run 35 and a half minutes. It's been really entertaining football on a perfect day. Virtual carbon copy of the conditions we had last Sunday. What a game that, that turned out to that be. That game set a high bar. This has sure been did. far more the score fest so far than the 83-82 we saw last Sunday afternoon. Entertaining to say the least. Carlton with four goals in the opening 11. You know what you're going to get from them, but they're clearly dominating the clearances, the bar. Max's tie is bringing you term two of this round four match from Icon Park. The Blues with a 15-point advantage. O'Keefe got the tap. Green went hunting for it. Hooper went hunting for O'Keefe. We heard from Luke Power. Macca, what did Adam Scroblack have to say in the port huddle? Well, plus eight for inside 50s. They've just got to get more bang for buck was the key message. Be smarter moving the ball forward. The story there, the efficiency. The Blues going at 82% by foot. The Borough 55 in the opening quarter is... Fraser Rossman, who was second in Port's best and fairest last year, is last up. O'Keefe and Flockhart both with fingertips on it. Josh Green, as the family does, clears it. Barnes after it. Won the day eventually. The Sandgroper sends it high. Presenting for it is Young. Late on the scene was Conlon. And his frustration grows. He's had a couple of opportunities and hasn't quite taken them. Coughlin. A little bit slow to react from that kick inside the Ford 50. Young short to Getty. Long to the wing. Rankin works his man under it. Gets to the back and dribbles out in front of Tom Highmore. Spent time on the St Kilda list, Tom Highmore. Played a lot of footy down at Sandringham. Now at Port Melbourne as he looks to get back into the AFL system. He's had a good start to the season as well, but yet to have a possession this afternoon. Blues by 15 points. Flockhart back towards the line. Nelson got there, kept it alive. Great body work. And there's Rankin on wide again. Not a great kick, but nicely gathered Signorello. Quick hands, Barnes. Pops a handball over the top. McComb, Rankin, Watson, still dry. Big defensive spoil over the top. Front and centre, Barnes again. They kept it moving, Port Melbourne. Signorello almost. Young's kick's going to come back. Still dry. McComb. Good kick. Signorello in the middle of that pack. Three of them go at it. And there's Felix. Uh, he's that making his presence felt. It was a beautiful kick to a really dangerous part of the ground. If you know your big men are providing contests, why not put it up in the air and allow them a run and jump at it? And Flockard did exactly that. It was, I mean, they could have raffled it. Chance to kick his third. <laughs> this has the potential to be a very significant day in Felix Flockhart's football career. Has not looked like missing. Margin back to nine points. We've got a good one yet again on 7 VFL's Match of the Day. Coming to you live on 7 Plus every weekend. 7 VFL, Sandful and Waffle. Live on the weekends, on demand during the week. All the best of State League footy from right around the country, live and free. On seven plus. Repeat inside forward 50s. Really important. Maxis replay. Good kick. And Flockhart, who drifted forward from the ruck roll. He's, got, he's gone back into the middle of the ground now against Hudson O'Keefe. He's doing it all 
in the middle of the ground and up forward. Port with three inside 50s to nothing, and Felix Flockhart likes round 4 3 against the Bull Ants in the corresponding round last year. Three in 36 minutes of play here this afternoon. As Porter roaring back into this one after conceding the first four. Stevens to White, the South Warrnambool boys hooking up. White's left foot ball wants Murkov through the fingertips. Free for Shepherd will go against McMahon. Yeah, just a little block. You knew McMahon was trying to protect Murkov in the air, but uh, he did step into the way of the Borough defender. Watson to Rankin, the Redheads in defence combining. Rossman receives from Hurd. To go inboards. Barnes, Lemmy got a climb over the top. Sends it back. Nelson, he's got bins wide. Sends it further afield. McMahon trapped behind Watson. Rossman needs the line and takes it there. It's a dangerous kick back through the, the corridor, isn't it? If you, if you turn it over, you're giving direct access back the other way. They were lucky to get away with that, the bar. Tom Hurd with the kick in. That's a nice kick. No, they're on here if he can get up quickly. Hooper to Smith to Signorello. Working hard to get forward of the football was Curry. But they come inside instead, and that'll work okay. Oh, great ball movement. Coast to coast, the kick from Hurd was outstanding. Harvey Hooper knew that they had men on the outside, so that handball receive was, was critical, and they got some overlap run and carry. Smart decision making going inside Ford 50. From Miller to Barnes. Guy Barnes, a chance to make it a one possession game. This has been great from Port Melbourne. Brownie, we're seeing both these teams in the early stages of the season haven't been able to put together for four quarters, and we've seen it here. Port started slowly, Carlton started really well. Scripps flipped now, and that's been the issue for them. They haven't been able to play four quarters of consistent footy. Yeah, well, the Borough have just got back to what is their DNA, winning the contested football, and they're using it better now. They just didn't come to play for the first six or seven minutes, and they've done really well to to get themselves back in the contest last three to the visitors hennis o'keefe getting down and dirty seen off by dan mckenzie making his port melbourne debut this afternoon did play 39 games with sandringham his time on the saints list as bins has held it's his fifth touch so quieter compared to the 25 of his first two outings of the season. McMahon through the hands of Rossman. Moy has been clever. Tap to McMahon. Lafroy looking for an exit strategy. Skies it. Carl underneath. Heard there as well. Carl might run around the back and grab it off all of them. He ran straight over the top of Rossman, who then thankfully handballed it into Heard to find the intended target of the line. Hennis has it in the back pocket. Port dodging a bullet. Margin now at five. Over the head of McKenzie and out. There's Dan McKenzie. Just had a rotten run with injury. Went over to Fremantle. Did the preseason, was an SSP chance, and then injured again. Back to Melbourne to try and keep his dream alive with Port Melbourne. Ma couldn't control it. Good tackle pressure there from O'Keefe, but he got into his back in the process. Port Melbourne ball. Blues have got some work to do here. Port, control of the game right now. McKenzie inside to Highmore. What can the Blues do now to change the momentum in this game? Signorello off the back of the square. Still dry stands underneath it. They're going to pay a free kick for a block. Non-officiating umpire called that, so they're going to have to... 
Starts streaming back the other way here, the Burrick, as they were on. So Monaghan wins the free kick. We'll go short to Ramshaw. The confident, fluent ball movement of the early stages for the Blues, just not quite there at the moment. Gone back into their shells a little bit. This is a better switch from Ramshaw. They've gone from one flank to the other, and they've done it quickly enough to get some men forward of the football. Ma wants to go quickly for that reason. High inside 50. Some marking options there. Off the hands of Flockhart at ground level. Picked up by Carl, and he snaps a goal. Clever finish. Two goals for Ned Carl. Back out to 11 points. It was a better build-up, wasn't it? The switch of play, the Maxis replay, and Ned Carl, he doesn't need too many opportunities in front of goal. Just the four possessions, but he's kicked a couple of really nice, smart goals. But after 2-2 last week in the single-figure loss to the Pies. So that breaks a run of three straight for Port. Murkov versus Flockhart, a tangle of arms. Hooper will get to it first and did well to flick it up to Hennis. Spiralling ball. Conlon put the hands into Lewis, but the balls track the number 58. Pivots the kick wide. Highmore coming to present. Back with a flight and reward for effort for White. Pops the handball as Kuypers sneaks away from Highmore. Two on two deep. Flyer at the back was Monaghan. McMahon was at high. No, umpire lets it go. It was on the right plane to make that call. Field umpire Nick Scott, one of four officiating this afternoon, was in the right spot to make the call and get it right. The channel to goal here, though, the Blues. Flockhart has to turn 360, was being held ever so slightly by Murkov in the process. Felix Flockhart with three goals. Now trying to get it done in the ruck. Sends it clear. Miller wants a free for a hold. Over the top came Young with the fist. Curry to Smith. Green's kick was impeded. Getty pancaked on debut by Curry. And can take the free as Carlton just musters some time in forward half. Young steps around Highmore. Front and centre was Kuypers. Immediately shut down. Approaching the middle stage of the second term, Blues by 11 points. Led by 15 at quarter time. Hit the first four of the game. Lafroy in there hunting. Here's Kuypers again. Ramshaw and Kuypers came together, met in the middle. It's a different game this second term from what we saw in the, the first. It was just free-flying ball movement. Much more contested now. Murkov. Highmore, Hennis, Moyer is kicked two. This is left. It's not an area of the ground that you do want to cough the ball up from that stoppage. Carlton had two out waiting for that blast kick with Port having the numbers at the source. Rankin, the former swan on the left. Miller had three to beat. Prout met solidly by Curry. Along the deck, Ramshaw flew it to Ma. Fumbly ball, Chincotta. Flockhart tried to go low and take his legs out. Getting it done up high was Hooper. And the two buzz cuts have a stalemate. Tom Hurd joins us. Tom, first of all, congratulations on 50 VFL games. Nice to have ticked that milestone off, I'd imagine. Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely. It's a, obviously a tough league to play in, and a, yeah, a real honour to hit 50 games. So, yeah, awesome. What's changed in this contest since you conceded the first four goals as Matty Signorello slides in for another one? Yeah, I think I think we probably just uh, got a bit more disciplined 
in the back half, sort of, and then and then played off that. Use some ball movement through the corridor, um, try to get some speed on the ball, and yeah, just sort of kickstart our offense with a bit more with a bit more tougher defense. Opportune time with the goal for you to rotate back into the game. We'll let you go. Awesome, thank you. Wonderful to hear from Tom Hurd. Adam Skobalak, he preys on him pre-game. Third in their best and fairest last season, and this is the style of game Port need. They don't need the ball camped in Carlton's forward 50, static play. They want it in motion. That's what brought them back into the contest, Brownie. Yeah, certainly, and good, good mark there from Jimmy Miller, and the handball receives that they're getting now just allows that forward 50 entry to be much deeper much more efficient and Signorello he's been dangerous all afternoon kicks his first and suddenly it's back within a kick after the Blues led by as much as 23 points if you decided to mow the lawns on one of the last Sundays in April you've come back to a different game than what we had 30 minutes ago McMahon flew over the top and missed it Fumbly was Monica Rankin has been important in the back half Thus far for the borough. Yeah, he's been nice and composed with ball in hand. Good defensively. Been impressed with Rankin's game. Flockhart went early against Murkov. Modica. Clears the defensive zone, but Blues have got numbers to send it back through Phillips. Kuypers spoil over the top from Rossman. Stool dry receives a quick handball from Green. Downfield free kick. Advantage will be paid. Oh. Wasn't much of an advantage. It was a horrible bounce for Curry. Might work for the Blues. McMahon. Beaten in the air by Rossman. <coughs> Thought about the kick inside. Still thinking about it. Blues have got good numbers, though. So in the end, he'll take the more conservative option down the line. Gow is the target. Flock out of the back. Lovely pick up off the deck. Modica. Oh. Stubbings. Almost stubbed the handball. Ma, he's taken down. Good tackle. Couldn't fo force his way through. Stubbings and Rankin closed the doors on him. Hooper wanted to find Stubbings. It was audacious, and suddenly the Blues have got numbers at the source. Stevens flicks to Bins, who's got a vacant goal to shoot at, but just miscues. It was a bob each way for a shot at goal, or Kuyper's... They should have done better on that occasion. Men everywhere for the Blues. It was a, a poor handball choice from Harvey Hooper. And things have flipped in regards to efficiency inside 50 in the quarter. It's Port five inside 50s for three goals. Carlton have had 11 entries for one four. Rossman, low kick, funded into the chest of Hennis, who had the supreme recovery on Stevens. Handball not the best, though, for Stool Dryer, who fights for it. With Ferronado and Getty. Some skill errors just creeping in for the Borough. Drop mark, missed handball. If they can clean that up. They're going to be mighty hard to beat around these stoppages. Hooper wins that one. Gow was nice gather. And taken down off his kick. Which opens the door for Proud. That's a thundering <laughs> tackle from Jacob Conlon. Who's hurt himself in the process. Bit of a frustrating day, and he took it all out on that tackle, but it's hurt him. He's up now. Young's kick towards McMahon. Moy couldn't control it on the ground. Bins will get the opportunity. Moyer, handball was a little fierce, couldn't take it cleanly. Hennis stepped through traffic. Won it for the borough. Stool dry. Heard. He's got a man in space. Stubbings. And they move it forward now to Curry, who can get it and go. Delivery inside 50. Vickers came over the top, but the Blues have got numbers at the back. And Mills can go to Lafroy. It's probably not the part of the ground that you want to be turning the ball over. A shallow forward 50 entry. Opens the door for Carlton across the far side now to quick for the quick ball movement. Ma marks after Stephen shielded him. Phillips gave it to Lafroy. Corkscrew ball. Well classed by Kuipers for his second of the afternoon. All well, the efficiency that we saw in the first quarter for the Blues has gone begging. Now they can't buy a goal. One goal, five for the quarter. And Highmore with things on the broadcast side, largely vacant.
Harry Knox despite the pressure from Prout. Got Rankin short against the line, but they've been prepared to play aggressive and try and have the game's heat map living through the corridor. Robbie McComb back from a foot injury. Miller needs to present, got a hand to it. Now needs support at ground level. Gets it from Green. Excellent handball to Flockhart. Spaces it now. Curry couldn't get away from Lemmy, who stuck the arms out it's and a great stopped tackle. him cold. It's a great tackle from the big man. Look at him. Well done. It's good to have that wingspan. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Bins fashions a kick on his left. Hennis got a terrible bounce. Moyer couldn't keep his feet. In his back. He'll get a free kick. He's getting up a little short, just hanging onto that shoulder. Macca. Well, you can see Port Melbourne trying to push up into the contest with that half forward, which is leaving Lockie Young free down back. That's why they're going short, short, and by handball out of their back half. That's Macca. Lockie Young, such a presence in the back half for the Blues. Highmore taken down as he kicked. Hennis strong oh. and somehow Moy came up with it, don't know how, and then actually missed his fist. And over the line it went, and he's hurt him. He's got, I think he's got McCorkey as well. He hurt his shoulder moments ago. He said, yeah, look, I'm checking out for the minute. It's been a bit of a sloppy last four or five minutes from both sides. Somehow found the football and then <laughs> missed the handball. Comes back to O'Keefe. Can bounce it to 50. Murkov had the height advantage, but couldn't affect the contest. Highmore and Hurd towards Highmore. Monaghan heads goalward. Good pressure from the back from Barnes affected the kick. 1-6 now. They're missing all their shots right at the moment. If they were a golfer, they'd be out on the range just trying to work things back. So margin at nine. Heard gazing into the sun. Hooper will get over his head. He'll be thrown in. Three quarter time score from Piranha Park. Coburg with three unanswered goals in the third quarter and staring a win in the face. 18 points is the margin. Dintina Sante and Grant with a couple for the home side as Ramshaw gets. The clearance of his life. Sent it deep over Murkov. That's a fantastic goal. Outstanding work around the contest. Usually only happens like that at training, where you can hit the ball through a stoppage at full tilt and tear away. There's no Skins V shirts on that occasion. Back at our quarter time margin. Well, territory getting dominated by the Blues, but they haven't been able to put it on the scoreboard. The Maxis replay, Heath Ramshaw just hitting that contest at pace, and sure he was just kicking it to the top of the square, but it, it cleared everyone and went through for a much needed goal for the Blues. This is off in the way. They missed the kickable ones, and then Ramshaw. Comes up with a beauty. They couldn't miss in the first quarter, literally. Seven straight. Now they've got 2-6 for the turn. Margin back out to 15 points. Good commitment from both players there as McComb and Stevens went hard at it. Here's Ramshaw involved again. Another great possession for him. Releases Ferranato inside 50. Monaghan playing from behind. He snaps goalward. And misses the lot. The Irishman's had a couple of opportunities, half chances in this quarter. Super athletic, isn't it? Yeah. Very interesting prospect for the Blues as he works on his game sense. Just picks up the speed at this level. Highmore's kick. Lafoy there to put some pressure on. Make sure the Blues will get another forward half stoppage. There's a been overly assured Highmore coming out of the back line. Couple of kicking errors so the margin back to 15 where it was at quarter time <laughs> oh, 
Ball will dispute inside 50. Hennis. Prout. That's a great kick. Chinconna. Ramshaw. Another inside 50 for the Blues. Carl against Hurd. Umpire put whistle oh, in the mouth and chose too. not to blow it. Big fly over the top. Nice mark taken by Logan Prout. Sixteenth. This will be the 17th inside 50 for the quarter. I think they had 10 in the first term for seven goals. And that's a good mark taken by Jimmy Miller. Port hanging on a little here late in the term as the Blues look to surge and extend their 15-point quarter time lead. He's done some nice things this afternoon, Jimmy Miller, 26-year-old. Back from South Fremantle. Seventh touch of the term for Rossman. It might have been a turnover. Smith had bins lined up, had to pull out late. Curry taken the ground by Chin Cotter. Ramshaw, six touches a term high for the Blues to go with that goal. Tom Hurd and Highmore, eight apiece. Just shows that the ball's been living in Carlton's half with that 17-7 to seven inside 50 differential. Hennis under pressure. Curry happy with the line. It's shielded over by Nelson. As Harvey Hooper checks out for a spell. Get a good clearance player though in Josh Green returning to the action. Luke Nelson on screen. Of course, formerly having time with Richmond's VFL team and Coburg. Miller wrestled his way to the front on Murkov. Bins was there. Ma handballed it straight to Barnes. In the right spot to mark is Young. He did it on the third bite. That's the kick that the Borough just haven't been able to stop in this last 10 minutes. Stevens, Chin Cotter, elected to hand pass. Ma goes short to Carl, who continues to emerge from the shadows inside 50. He just doesn't need a lot of ball to make a lot of damage. This for his third. Real opportunist, and it's been dangerous kicks into the corridor, just off the line, and then handball receives that have been allowing Carlton some really good looks. Third in the Blues, VFL best and fairest last season. 65-50. In his VFL career. Another one that's pushed right. So the Blues have won the quarter. They have kicked 2 7 to 3 straight. They really could have put the borough away here in this second term and playing some really good football, but not able to convert. It's the opposite of the opening term, isn't it? The sort of stuff that drives coaches crazy. Remember, Luke Power at quarter time said, yeah, okay, we went inside 10 times for seven goals. That's amazing, but it's not sustainable. Now they've got the inside 50 count through the roof, but they haven't been able to score. Correct. Game being completely played in the Blues forward half at the moment. Murkov. Nelson and now Monaghan. Little handball. Kuypers did well to reel it in. Back into a dangerous position. Doesn't find a body, but Ramshaw does really well. And Chincotta's within range here. He could actually just go back and launch. Harry Lemmy says exactly that, points to the goals and says, just go back and kick it. He's, he does have a long leg on him. He's going to give himself a, a good long run up. And now he sets himself. Everything's been getting pushed to the right. If he hits it sweetly, he can easily go the journey. From inside the square. That's going right. And draw it back. <laughs> Well, they've kicked two of the more difficult opportunities. Well, long range. That did look like he'd hit it and it was going to fade right, but it, it came back and... It was in the motion, wasn't it? Yeah. He ducked out to the right and just worked it back. Great finish. Good confidence in his abilities too. Max's replay was good, confident in his ability. Alex Chincotta knew exactly how long his leg was. He hit it beautifully, and it's faded back for a much-needed goal. They've got absolute control of this match at the moment. 
Just his second in 29 VFL matches. And remarkably, Carlton by 22 points. They've been the better side in the second part of this quarter after Port Melbourne have done so much to try and erase what was a four-goal lead early. McKenzie over the head of Conlon. Can he have a moment? Has his way. Shoved his man out of it and found Vickers. And that might put a bit of wind in Conlon's sails. He's had a rough afternoon, hasn't he? But he's kept presenting. And that was a good bit of unselfish football. Vickers kicked their first of the afternoon. He gives himself an opportunity to chime in here with a goal just before half time that the Borough desperately need. Concussed in round two against the Dolphins after one two in round one against the Sharks. What a find he was last season. Went from a train on player in the Port Melbourne Academy structure to a key part of their operation with 18 8 for the season last year. For his second of the day. And the Borough will take some momentum to the sheds. Critical centre clearance, this one. Good speed as well from McKenzie. Put it out into some space, and it's been a tough afternoon, as we mentioned, for Conlon. But he's going to play a role in this second half if they are to come back. And Vickers with a nice finish. His second goal. Margin at 16. Played 30 and a half minutes, second term. Seven VFLs match of the day. Oh. Miller and Murkov. <laughs> Jimmy enjoying the free kick. Which he delivers inside 50. Let me work Flockhart underneath it and then collected the football. Dangerous handball. Here's Conlon involved again. Spins, gets it off to Green. Oh, he did well, Conlon, too. Rode the tackle, found a, a teammate, and that was very gettable. Chincotta with the kick in, margin at 15. High quality game. Two teams hunting their first win of their 2024 Smithies VFL campaign. Murkoff over the top created the spillage for Ferranado. Port have got numbers here, but it nutmegged Highmore. Nelson paddles, got it on the second bounce. Looks centrally. It's a one on one inside 50. Heard, lost it in the sun. And Ned Carl, like only Ned Carl can, tried to take advantage. But got the fat part of it. And in the end, not the bounce. And Tom Heard may well emerge for the second half with a pair of Ray Bans. Did Ned Carl have a bit more time than he realised? He, he probably did, yeah. There's nothing worse than when. You're looking directly in the sun and you, you lose track of where the football is. Just open the door for Carl. He'd be disappointed with that. He's had a couple of shots in this quarter and missed. Couldn't add to his two goals. Oh, Heath just comes storming through. Coat hanger. And it is half time at Icon Park. It's been a fun game to watch. The Blues by 15 points at quarter time, 16 at the half. Great access, thanks to Adam Scrobelak there. Third quarter action, thanks to Crown. It's the Blues by 16 points. And maybe, just maybe, two quarters away from their first win of the season. Port trying to get their own as Hooper and Rankin involved early, as was Sam Green on debut. Oh, good. The check side to Miller. Done some important things. It's perhaps in range. Goal square not quite cleared out. Goes short, missed all the initial targets, and then Conlon got a bad bounce, as has been the theme of much of his day. Chincotta was stylish to find Lemmy. Murkov trying to work his way to the front. O'Keefe at the back, and that just clears the decks for White, but he had too much velocity to be clean. Primal was. Rankin 
Wall contact, Ma wanted the mark. Keep it in motion, Moyer thunders into Hooper, to Murkoff, who kicked forward over the head of Nelson, and Alex Murkoff needing to stay in his lane and handball that off to a midfielder. Yeah, Lockie Rankin being good with ball in hand this afternoon. I just think he tried a little bit too much then. That kick was dangerous and it nearly cost them. Opportunity goes begging for the Blues early. O'Keefe will arrive late on Smith. Goes to Rankin up, I says that's a throw. Rankin will race away, but he's going to have to come back. It'll be, it'll be O'Keefe's ball. As Smith tried to scoop it back to his teammate. Deemed a throw. Keep a traffic inside 50 here. Serious congestion. They've left some leading space in front of Murkov. A little bit more towards the pocket. That wasn't where the kick was intended. No, it's not a great off. kick. Toby Watson. He'd want his time again then. O'Keefe. Sliced it to the pocket. Watson, Rossman and Hurd. Looks out okay in the end for Port, but Lemmy will get across and pump it back inside for the Blues. So that's what's in front of Harry Lemmy. Pivots left and then kick with the outside of the right. McMahon's the flyer. White lurking as is Carl. The dangerous smalls are on the scene for the Blues, but it's going nowhere. Coburg breakthrough for their first win since round 19, 2022. Wow. Defeating Collingwood by 15 points. Congratulations to everyone involved at the Burgers. Rossman gets the clearance, but it may be only momentarily. And now VFL club that's doing it tough on the field and off the field. What does that mean? Everything. Winning's what you're in it for. I know it's a 21-team competition, and sometimes the... Anyway, the equity of the competition could be a little bit tilted, but still very much a place for the Bull Ants, for Coburg. They're in growing suburbs now. What a great opportunity. The terraces looked really full at Piranha Park this afternoon, and what's going to keep people coming back is following a successful footy team in their own backyard. So well done, well done to Jamie Cassidy, McNamara, and all involved. Well done to this man, Harry Lemmy, who started the third quarter in a blaze of glory. Yeah, he's taken three marks, two of those intercept marks as well, so... If that ball had got over the back, they were away in the borough. Ah, creative kick, releases Ramshaw. Handball not ideal for Chincotta, and the turnover might come here. Should Could they on. get punished the other way? Barnes, Signorello to 55. Kick not perfect for Gowers, and he got a horrible bounce. Lemmy, it's still there. Billy might still get on the end of this. He does. And that was a low percentage option. It was just, it was poor decision making. Signorello had the ball in hand. Billy Gowers needed to double back to the top of the goal square and he would have taken a mark sloppy all around there it from was. Port butchered that opportunity been a sloppy start to this third quarter a lot of turnovers Ramshaw left that one it's almost like Rankin called him out of it and then he goes to Curry can Angus had a bit of class here oh <laughs> perfect <laughs> Jimmy Miller he's presented really well this afternoon Good focal point up there. Him and Flockhart have been big presence in the air. He's had a few shots on goal. He sprayed a couple. This is a really important opportunity here for the Borough just to eat back into that margin. Make it 10 points. Miller. Yeah, it's Miller time. Turnover coming out of the back half. Open the door for Port Melbourne to counter-attack. And again, it was Lockie Rankin, ball in hand. He's had a good afternoon. It was a dangerous kick coming out of the back half for the Blues, straight up the corridor, and it was intercepted by Lockie Rankin, who's had a great day. You want the ball in his hands. He's going 93% by foot. And big Jimmy Miller. He's presenting magnificently up there for Port Melbourne. Heath Ramshaw, maybe just a little 
neural test around the hamstrings or his back as Flockhart, who's kicked three, got the clearance. Sweeping onto it, Barnes, hand in from Chincotta, who will get support from Prout. Try and shield Barnes away. Chincotta snaps. This will be a tricky bounce. It beats Rankin and White. Ma got it to Binns, whose kick's going to hug the line for Carl to mark. And the run continues. White hustling forward. Toes it low oh. down. Presenting. Almost getting one in the back was still drier. Smith, he backheeled it in the end. Unwittingly to Kuypers, who got it out to Binns. Low kick down, not 15. Watson keeps it in motion. Carl gets an important hand in. And Carlton get a four and a half stop, so... The Borough, they haven't had their noses in front yet, but they're as close, you seem, you feel as they've been, because for all Carlton did to dominate that second part of the second quarter, they certainly didn't put them away. Vickers with the last of the first half. Miller with the first of the third quarter. Just 10 points, Mark. Dabs it back, Kuypers. Fist was solid from Highmore. Andrew McCormack, boundary side. Well, he for Ramshaw, he was dominant in that second term. 14 disposals for the game. Just getting some work on his thighs, the inner left thigh. came off complaining of some cramps, so the physio is just trying to get him back going. But he was brilliant in that second term. Opportunity for the Blues to manufacture something here. Hennis. It's a bit of territory. Awkward bounce. Beat all comers. Smith goes off the ground. Blues should get there first. Good pressure though. Rock Smith kept coming. Oh, that's a full body tackle from Jess Getty on to Boo. A rampaging Rock Smith. And he hurled everything he had at him. You love seeing that, don't you? He's a he's a bull, Rock Smith. He'd be a tough man to try and get down. Getty did a great job. Came delicately poised. Blues by 10 points. And a really interesting game. There's Getty again. Umpire says illegal disposal. And McComb was out of bounds. But advantage is paid and Hooper has a channel to goal. He'll kick it deep. This time Gowers is out with the drop on Lewis. Just needs the bounce. What can he do? Keeps it alive. Finds an option. It's Miller. He's second of the third. Makes it a four-point ball game. Well, this is McComb, and that ball has gone out. So they got away with one there on the crown replay. Clearly, when he lifted that ball above his shoulder, the whole ball went over the boundary line. But Billy Gowers, he's had a tough day at the office, and he's still trying to get involved. Big Miller. He stepped right up in this third term. Back within four points. Can Carlton respond now? Port Melbourne with the momentum. Hooper towards half forward. Phillips receives from Mills. Bounces to Nelson. Chips it. A little bit of height inside 50. That wasn't to the advantage of Carl. Bouncing football paddled forward by O'Keefe. Goes again. Can't control it. Still drier. Coughs it up. Stevens, high kick. Not a lot of distance. Well done, Rankin. Got the fist on it. O'Keefe comes back for more. Wrapped up in the tackle by McKenzie. And we've got ourselves a good contest here. Jimmy Miller with two goals in the quarter so far. Alongside Flockhart's three and Vickers two for the Borough. Hooper fighting for it. Got the handball out. There is Flockhart to McComb, who's steadily getting involved. Lemmy with a fist on Miller. And we'll see things off for now as there's a tangle between... Curry and Lockie Young off ball. Jimmy Miller and Harry Lemmy, they've both had their moments in the quarter. Lemmy's had a game-high five possessions in the third. Miller kicking the only two majors. Yeah, and the game's starting to 
be getting dominated around the clearances by Port Melbourne. Eight, make that nine to zero in this third term. Lockhart's palm to McComb. McKenzie swept onto it eventually. Back to Barnes, who caught the LBW. Turnover, Chincotta to Mark, and the Blues punished them on the turnover. Watson was in the right spot, but didn't find his target initially of Highmore, who did well to have a peep around the curtain. Earned the free kick. Again, not much advantage. But the high one for Hooper is a let-off for Port. They've taken advantage a few times this afternoon when they shouldn't have the borough. Got away with one then. Fifth touch of the term for Harvey Hooper. McComb. Over the head of Lemmy. Miller's already kicked two for the term. Mills. Phillips. Ferranato. Look out, Nelson. Chincotta. Off to Nelson, measures the kick, chips it over the top, and it goes through for a goal. Heath Ramshaw back into the action. Andrew McCormack, boundary side. Come back Which is true, he is boundary side. End-to-end -end football could have gone either way there. Down one end, Miller just fingertips away from maybe having a, his third shot for the quarter. It goes straight up the other end. And they had overlap run and carry and numbers four to the footy there. And a good finish from Nelson, but they're rolling the dice a little bit down back the Blues. Luke Nelson now with goals in all three outings as a VFL Blue, and they just continue to hold Port at bay. Free kick for Ferranato, 23rd man in his second outing. And here comes McMahon, out of the hands though of Monaghan. Smith in close confines. Flockhart did well to bounce it up to himself and then to Sam Green who heads for Miller, who's the hot hand in the third. Barnes was in the right spot, but couldn't finish off his work. Curry just got a hand in. That's better from Barnes. Sizzling past McKenzie. Big ball. Scoops the kick. There's a man out here of Conlon. Oh, well done. That's magnificent play. An enormous stop from Mills. But Port still have a chance. Smith lasers it to Conlon. But now Signorello's up. He needs a lead. He gets it from Miller. Pummeled away by Lemmy. Miller recovers to Hooper. Signorello trapped at the back. There was a little shove. And Lewis. Great play from Aiden Mills. He, 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 you wouldn't have seen it on your TV, but he came off his direct opponent, made the contest, and if he didn't win it or have it, it was an open goal for the Borough. 100% yep. goal saver. That would have been a run into an open goal. Brilliant from Mills, and he wore one in the process. Kuiper goes down. Look at the pressure now, the heat from Port Melbourne. Blues trying to respond here. Feels like the game's on the line right now. We're only midway through the third. Port have lifted their rating and they're challenging Carlton. Well, Aiden, Adam Scroblack demanded a relentless attack on ball and body at half time. He certainly got the response he wants. Feels like the Blues are just hanging in right now. They lead by 10 points, but Port coming at them hard. Watson, can he get away from McMahon? Just. Well done by Lemmy. He's been under some pressure. And by said play on, was touched. Young draws Signorello. Now to Mills. Well done, Signorello. Might still work here for the Blues, though. Prout. A fumble from Mills. Back to Prout. Look at this pressure from Port Melbourne. Young taken down. And well done, Signorello. Just first the smother to keep the ball in the area, then the follow-up effort, the second effort to get there and lay a tackle. They're working really hard, Port. Borough hunting their eighth inside 50 of the quarter. The Blues have already had that number. McKenzie fumbly recovers, keeps it alive. Hennis will walk it across. This game being played with the desperation of two teams looking for their first win. Yeah, absolutely. And Carlton need to respond around these clearances. So they're getting found out at the moment. 9-1 for the quarter. 
That's where all the drive's coming from for Port. And with respective dates against Geelong and the Suns, it doesn't get any easier if you can't find four points this afternoon. Rossman with a clearing ball that'll touch the paint of 50 Young with a free fly. Vickers was consigned to his fate. Picks out the target of Chin Cotter with the dancing feet. Overlap Ramshaw can step Conlon. Squeeze it wide for Phillips, who's always there as the relief outfielder. Phillips on the left, trying to cue the lead from White. Sam Green, the Tasmanian on VFL debut, takes a fine intercept. Off to Highmore. Carlton have led all day. They kicked the first four of the game. Port Melbourne have been in pursuit ever since. Have got within a kick a couple of times. Including in this term. Barnes. Blues are well set up on this occasion. So Port will be patient. Back to Highmore. Now to Curry. Thought about back to Barnes. Instead he'll take some territory to Hennis. Cody will thump it long. Signorello spoiled at the back by Prout. Who then looks to wrap it up. Matt gets to his feet and taken straight back down again and gone. Good scrambling defence from the Blues. It's quite a clever player, Signorello, but I'm not sure if he's the right option as Port's deepest brownie. They've got seemingly better marking targets as the get out. Yeah, and he's a good decision maker. I'd be playing him nice and high, being the guy that's delivering the ball inside the Ford 50, not the target deep. What a kick from Monaghan. Just sizzled at the Ferranato and... Now Ma, and now it's the Blues who have to try and pick their way through the congestion. Look at those numbers ahead of the football. Not a lot of holes to work in. That's great presentation. And the more we see a Robert Monaghan, oh. the more we like. And that's going to be 50 metres. Stubbing's the man. He just stepped over the mark ever so slightly, and he's been pinged. For Massive guy, price to pay. For a guy who's playing his third game of football ever at any level, he's impressive, Nudge. Yeah, he's quick. And he's got a long leg too. He's going to back himself in here, the big Irishman. We saw last week, launching them from outside 50. He's got a thumping boot on him. Yeah. And the Blues could really use this one. We're heading towards time on in the third term. He is to get back out to 16 points. Port have thrown some punches in this term. And the Blues could get it back to where it's been at the first two quarter breaks. 15 at quarter time, 16 at the half. Up steps Monaghan. Big moment for him. Ah, well. He just tried to kick that too hard. He it's, did. He really tried to launch it, didn't he? Yeah. We're not on next Sunday, but if that's not in Amy Clangers at halftime on the first Sunday in May, I'll be staggered. Watson back to Smith. You couldn't have pumped him up any more, around Jason. Of Roy. He just turned him into John Coleman. Oh, jeez. <laughs> You need to take responsibility for that. Smith for Hurd, the commentator's curse strikes. Let's hope it's not contagious. Rob just still dry up. Doesn't understand how this works. Dubbings finds Gowers, who casually has walked a good three or four metres in from the line from where he marked. Gowers sets it up. Young is set up. Flockhart. That might create a goal here for McComb. That aerial contest. And he's down and he's clutching. And he's what's gone for his knee, knee Felix no. Flockhart. This is not good. It was a massive crash of bodies. You can hear the, the crack. Let's hope it's contact as opposed to something that's happened on landing. We'll get a look at the replay in a moment, but Felix Flockhart. Three goals within the third minute mark of the second quarter of the game. I was thinking it was the slap of bodies together. I'm hoping that's all it was. He's up and walking. A great contest from Flockhart. You can just see that left knee buckle. Crown replay. Fantastic finish from McComb. And he's jogging off to the bench. You oh, just yeah. hope you just hope that it's a hyperextension and nothing. It was a real twist. Nothing more than that. He immediately clutched at it. You just hate to see it. He's had a, a magnificent afternoon today. Three goals. He's done some really crafty ruck work as well. And they'll be testing the structure of that left knee. Four-point game once again. 
This is the next goal that Port haven't been able to get to get themselves in front, but they are surging. Blues on the back foot. Hennis, another inside 50. Well done, Lewis. He's had some big wins under pressure today. He's clearly won that battle with Billy Gowers. Nicely weighted kick. Releases Ma. Runs away from Hennis. Down the line, White had to contest. Created the crumb for Carl. Well done, Will White. He might now get on the end of it himself. Steps, goes for it, and misses. What a goal that would have been. Looking dangerous. Every time that ball hits the ground inside Carlton's forward half, they have the numbers there. 1-1 one, one for Will White. Heard clears the danger. Easy out, Vickers. As Signorello presenting, he is a bit higher now. Billy Gow's long down the line. And that's where Vickers is going to be forced to go. Lemmy had, or Lewis had to gaze at the sun. Lemmy comes from the front. Getty, where's one? High and heavy from McComb, the most recent goal kicker. There's a bit going on between Carlton's blonde defence of Lewis and Lemmy getting into McComb. So that's what Jess Getty on debut. Is in front of him. It's a bit shallow, which opens the door for Miller to present. Just couldn't finish the mark. Binz's kick ricochets off Sam Green to Ma. It's turned over at halfway. Josh Green, Vickers, handball to Miller, who was already under pressure, spiked it forward. Ramshaw, no space oh, with the foot hanging on That's it. holding the and ball. Dropped it cold. Luxury was he was on the right side. Shielded from the umpire by the tackle of McComb. But this would be in the pre-season rules DVD to show you what incorrect disposal looks like. Maca boundary side. Felix Flockhart just doing some run-throughs now. The concerning thing was when he came off, his knee buckled again and when he went to change direction. So they're just doing the structural test now with the physios. It's all OK for Felix, who's been so impressive. O'Keefe, look at that pickup down at his ankles. Bins. And then a push in the back. Free kick goes to Getty. Not sure Conlon, who's had a tough day at the office, could have done any more. Conlon's been today's Aiden Begg. <laughs> just one of those frustrating days. Aiden ended up having a great day last week, but has spent so much time on the turf. <laughs> Today, Conlon's just had a frustrating afternoon in a different way. Last week, the Blues. Fell a point short in a thriller against the Pies. Another thriller may be coming up this afternoon. Turnover comes. Gowers from 50. Puts Port in front. Well, the Bowen structured up really good down the line, forcing Carlton to go lateral, and then just a, a drop mark. Lockie Young marks that 100 times out of 100. Open the door for Billy Gowers, who's had a really quiet afternoon, had to work nice and high for his dis disposals. He loves the big moments, Billy, and it's the first time the Borough have hit the front. Port with eight of their 12 goals from turnovers. Carlton have led it for 91 minutes, but no longer is that the case. Mill of the clearance, heads forward, Vickers versus Getty. Signorello now with the pivot and layers to the outside. Josh Green with a license to shoot from 50. Two and a minute for the red and blue. Done some damage from stoppage in the game. Second time they've kicked one from a centre bounce. Well, the big concern for Luke Power is 
these clearances. They're getting absolutely smashed in this third quarter. 12-2. And the centre clearances in particular been very, very beneficial for Port Melbourne. Five straight to 1-1 one, one in the term. Porter on the rampage here. Carlton need to dig in. Critical few minutes between now and three-quarter time. Blues have got to hold up. They trail by seven points. Chincotta off the back of the square lays the tackle. Bins. Nelson to Phillips. Back to Nelson. Down the line. Kuypers presents. Spoil from the back. Well done, Green. Attacked it. Watson. The kick from Stubbings will be cut off. Prout, who's done some good things, finds Chincotta. Blues need a response. Lemmy, low down. Oh, Sells the, the dummy. Gets around Gowers. Murkov can't get there. But he does make Rossman earn it. Yeah, he bravely stood in the hole there. He knew the contact was coming. Now this, that is selling candy. Like the best of them. Dustin Fletcher, 31 and all. McKenzie in the shadows. Matt Signorello's made his way across to this plane of play. It's just out of shot, but looked hobbled in the previous sequence he was involved in. Heard back for Watson. Not quite queuing the rack time for the Borough in this quarter. They've kicked six of the last seven. Watson, one of five in Port's team this afternoon with previous AFL experience. Trapped behind was Conlon. Miller made the fly and can claim the mark. He's it was glued to him. He's had some sort of quarter. Two goals to get him going. Having real influence when he goes into the ruck as well. He's the difference to the young rucks in the game with that sort of more mature body. Yeah, seven marks. Been putting it to use. A lot of those contested too for Miller. McKenzie wants the short, gets it into the hands of Rossman. And Port have moved the chains nicely here. Spare here, McMahon can fly. It's through his fingertips. Young, almost met high by Conlon, who you just feel at some point today, the footy gods are going to swing it back his way and he'll get an opportunity. He could have a big moment in the last quarter and if you're the spare down back like McMahon was, then you just can't afford to let that ball get out the back. He's got to bring that, either mark it or bring it to the front. And on the backhand, it was intended for Monica. That's holding the Hooper with the rundown tackle. <laughs> Umpire says throw it in, Macca. Well, big sigh of relief. Felix Flockhart ready to come back on the ground, so he's beginning the all clear with that left knee concern. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant news. Yeah, fantastic. Didn't look great. He, he said on landing. He said it was going to be a significant day for him. He kicked three goals, and he, you know, when he went down clutching that knee, he just he hoped that it wasn't going to be significant for the wrong reasons. Bins flirts with the boundary line. Rossman touches it just inside. So we've hit 29 minutes, third term, 7 VFL's match of the day live from Icon Park. It's been an entertaining one. It's been unpredictable from the start. The numbers have been all over the place. It's going to be fun for the coaches to analyse this one. The metrics can go largely out the window, but right now all you need to know is Port's dominating on the inside and they've put it to good use. They've kicked five goals to one in the third term. They lead by seven points and they may not be done yet. Lockie Modica, who's been shift forward held up. He was originally out of the selected side, but unfortunately he's with Sam Philp, a former Blue. After making his return last week against the Dolphins, wasn't eventually able to take his place today. Miller has been magnificent in the third. Aiden Mills with another important defensive moment on Modica. Someone's got to go get the footy here. They're going to have to go behind the goals and find another one, I think. Oh, no, we've got someone in the crowd who's going to make their way around. Photographer. Jimmy Miller with 10 hitouts, four of them to advantage. And there's that footy. Next row down. <laughs> Which is free to a good home if this person wants to sneak out behind our broadcast truck. Some movement around this stoppage here. Rock Smith lurking Vickers the contest busy. on the defensive side for Port. O'Keefe decides to just try and hold Miller, who 
Had the frame in the right spot. Getty a second opportunity. McComb already with one in the term. Bins, a blast kick. Port should be set up. It gets away from Kuypers. Monaghan can see it to the chalk. Rob Monaghan, third game of Australian rules football in his life. The young man from Ireland. As Felix Flockhart. Looks a bit proper. game. Yep. We'll go forward. Ramshaw on the oh, burst, mate. the fend off Miller. Something going here for the Blues. No, Chick Connor is done cold by Rankin, who gives him an extra one. Lockie might go back and have a shot here. He wants the footy, surely not. Big barrel. He's going to have to. Oh, he ran off his line, said the umpire. <laughs> so it won't count anyway. Oh, this game's had a bit of everything. Now a bit of a dust up. Only the two disposals, so if the Blues are to come back. It's got to be on the back of Liam McMahon as well. Final quarter action, seven VFLs, match of the day. Here's Nigel Carmody. O'Keefe, stiff arm, Flockhart, McComb will get the kind bounce and out the front gate. O'Keefe runs him down. Oh, that's brilliant from the big man. The tackle didn't slip. That can really set the agenda as we kick off this final quarter with thanks to Chemist Warehouse. O'Keefe's kick, Signorello got a hand on it, but it still got to the intended target of Prout. And here is McMahon, he runs under the footy, as did Watson. McMahon gets rank and high, but again, right side of the contest for that infringement not to be seen. Sun in the eyes to that end's been a major problem. We saw Lockie Young have issues with it in the third term, and there was another example there. Carlton with just one goal in the third. Luke Nelson, 11 minutes in. It was all port either side. Jimmy Miller, if you're just joining us, with a game-breaking two goals in the third and then excellent time in the ruck. Flockhart with a chicken wing to strip O'Keefe. McKenzie will walk it out against Phillips. Flockhart, not quite. Chincotta threw a boot at it and missed. Alex and buried into the turf. Umpire says holding the football. Harvey Hooper. That critical matchup with Chin Cotter. Kick towards the wing and mark taken by McKenzie. Oh, what about going inside? He's been called to go now. Instead, he'll go long down the line. One on one. Lewis and Gowers getting across to help. There was Lemmy. It was important. Green. Got the hands free. Pressure came from Ferranato. Here's McKenzie again. And well done, Ferranato. Good full body smother on that occasion. Good defence from the Blues, just hemmed him long down the line. Game. Had the numbers there. Game two for Christian Ferranato, made his debut last week against the Pies, looking for his first win at VFL level. 18 touches last week, six so far today for the man who was fifth in the Morrish last year. Green emerges off the chest of Barnes, back into the hands. Ramshaw claims him, Nelson to Mills. Can the Blues generate something from the back? Young has to go hunting after it. Mills returns as the support layer. The handball missed him. Smith impedes the Mills kick, but it gets to Moyer, who's been largely unsighted since kicking the first two. Turnover here. Miss Ramshaw. McKenzie takes full advantage to locate Rossman. True. Since he got that corky early on, hasn't been a factor, Moyer. And there's 50. Well, we saw him give a critical one away last week. With a little tummy tap and then the descent call, which cost the Blues a goal when Ryan Sparks went back and nailed it. And now an opportunity for Fraser Rossman with the man on the mark standing at 45 out. Doesn't kick too many goals. This would be a big one. 45th game this afternoon, just four VFL goals. Spent most of his time down back. He trots to 51. Makes really good contact on the launch. But it's just across the face. So our first score of the final quarter, taking three and a half minutes. Young brings it in with Gowers trying to get a fingertip on it. Another couple of former dogs. Lafroy without it with Hooper. 
putting him under pressure. Lafroy goes in again, gets the kick forward, but only as far as Heard. He's played a very balanced game in defence in his 50th at the level. A likeable game from Lockie Rankin. This is his 14th kick. Conlon and Lewis, it's over their heads, and Flockhart, who's not running at full rat power, you'd imagine, but his presence alone important. A tremendous 14th VFL game Felix Flockhart has had. Like round four last year, three goals, the output, perhaps more to come. The free kick will go his way after O'Keefe, who's over his shoulder. Flockhart goes short, finds Dan McKenzie at 55. Spears low towards the pocket. Beautiful delivery That's to Miller. Kick. That's just a superb kick. It makes it so hard for a defender that likes to have a, a run and jump at the, the football. You've got the big frame of Miller. Well thought out there by McKenzie. Lovely Ford 50 entry. And, well, he was the man that just put the burr on his back to start the third quarter. Kicked a couple of big goals. Chance to give one off here, and that's really loose marking. Yeah. They just switched off. All the Carlton defenders and midfielders switched off, expecting Miller to have a shot on goal. Wind it back 20 seconds, and Billy Gowers had gone to Jimmy Miller after he took the mark. They had a conversation. Gowers was smart enough to draw up that play there. Chance for him to kick his second. Hangs it right. Nine-point game. Well-travelled Billy Gowers. He's played in the VFL Grand Final here with Southport a couple of years ago. Played most of his footy last year with Moey in the Gippsland Latrobe League. Young tries a clearing ball. Murkoff got hands too. Swing from Monaghan. Vickers emerges. Chincotta runs him down. McComb the half volley. He'll take the tackle of Ramshaw. A couple of tough hombres who've done... Good jobs for their sides in close today. Ramshaw with 16 touches. McComb 12 in that superb third quarter goal. Flicked it out. Ma, Hamble off the forearm of Hennis. Curry's tackle lingered. Player down here for the Blues. Nelson shaded it off. Stevens to Young. Oh, well done. Kick smothered. Another moment for Flockhart. A big win there for Conlon. Gowers looking for his left. All Curry. His kick smothered as far as Miller. The figure eight through the legs. Oh. And now a ricochet that goes back and sideways. <laughs> How did he do Flockhart. that? What hasn't this game had today? That was almost impossible. <laughs> Another Amy Clanger. He's gone from 15 metres out to 50 metres out. I thought the footy gods were going to reward Flockhart there. He was the one that laid the, the great smother. Was it a ricochet? Did you yeah, maybe. The side of the ball? I'm not sure. Was it a ricochet? No. no I reckon he's just hooked it. Brilliant. <laughs> Murkoff, lovely tap. Murkoff down to Bins. And now to McMahon and the Blues get out. So that territory they lost from the Flockhart kick could be really important. It's allowed the Blues to get to a decent position for Stevens to launch. Bins. Can he find someone at half forward? Highmore works. Kuiper's under it. White lurking at the back. And we'll get a free kick for a hold. Is it going to White or Moyer? It's coming back to Will White. And a chance for the Blues to draw back within a kick. So some big moments for the Borough. Billy Gowers miss and the Flockhart. It's taken aground by Stool Dryer without possession. So Will White a chance to kick his third goal, second goal rather. Got close to the man on the mark, got under it as a result. Slides it across the face. Blues first score of the last quarter and their first foray inside their Ford 50 taking eight minutes. They now get a chance to set up 18 in front of Tom Hurd who continues to have issues with Melbourne's late afternoon sunshine. Miller and Flockhart perhaps both impeded each other in the Anchin Cotter. Out to Lemmy, 
Skies one, still drier and Highmore. Still drier perhaps had enough of it. Maybe Highmore was the one who touched it in flight. It's got to be better at communicating there. They were both in really good positions. Ended up costing themselves an intercept mark at a critical point of the game. Murkov and Flockhart eventually make their way there. Flockhart the tap. Mackenzie overran it. Monaghan, oh. clever shield from yeah. Carl. Xavier Ma puts it way wide. Two teams without a win. Pressure going to build in this final turn, Brownie. We've seen a few little errors. Yeah, those half chances are going to be crucial. We saw the, the Blues not take a few of those chances last week, which cost them the game. Young at the front. Nice spoil over the top from Flockhart. Yeah, good discipline there from behind. Playing the percentages. Watch for a, a big slap in the space here for Murkov. Farinado's just come off the bench and gone to the front. He goes to the back towards Bins, though. Dangerous. McComb gets the hands free. Vickers has run down. Hooper's run down. The first one will be paid. Getty. He tackled well this afternoon, hasn't he? He's looked Couple at home occasions. at the level in his first game in the VFL. Certainly not out of his depth. Getty to forward 50. Murkov the big chance. Socket forward by Kale. Carl rather. Socket by Kale sounds better. <laughs> Smothered off the boot of Stubbings. Ma loses his footing. Kuiper's clever. Bins from the pocket to a dangerous spot. Can Moore, Moyer get involved? Sliding in, it's still there for Carl. He sockers again. Hit the, post. Hit the post. Didn't get the ricochet. <laughs> and then pulls up a little sore. They're looking dangerous, though, the Blues. Getting some repeat inside 50. Uh, they dialing up the pressure, locking the ball in their forward half and creating some half chances. Watson finds Modica. He's kicked poor. Monaghan, his legs taken out. Hooper wants to get it free for Barnes. Well done by Prout to hold it in. As fatigue starts to become a factor. 11 goals between the teams in the first quarter, another seven in the second. And things have slowed scoring wise in the last after it was five to one port in the third. Smith to Hooper. Stool dryer. Free kick. Will go the way of Miller for a hold. Against the blue skipper Lockie Young. Gower's calling for it down the line. Miller will head in that direction. He's got separation off Lewis. Ran under the footy in the end. Lewis sweeps onto it. Chin Cotter working from the back. Expansive hand pass for Moyer. Has to catch it on the bounce. Monica could catch him. Hennis tracking back Nelson. Getty, composure on debut to find Bins. Goals suddenly become very hard to come by. This next one is going to be critical. Hit 12 minutes in the final term, yet to have a goal. Ma to Bins. Porter well set up. Jackson spots an opportunity. Lafroy. Kick inside to White. Run from behind came from Lafroy, who'll push forward to get in a position. White may have to take the long option. Bins jogs down the line. White will set it up. McMahon comes at it. And he's pushed in the back. He didn't need to be pushed because he was running under the footy then anyway. Within range, Liam McMahon could go back and launch this. And it would be a huge goal for the Blues. Quite date the office, just the two disposals. Carlton have set up a wall in case this one comes out across the front edge of the square. But McMahon will hope to see it sail through for a major. From 51 metres, slices it. It's still there for the Blues. Mark couldn't take it cleanly, but great tackle on Hennis. Strips him of the football. Cody comes again. A fend off, and now he's gone. Yep. That, that was prior opportunity, that first fend. 
and as soon as he didn't make contact with his boot, he was in all sorts of trouble. So the pressure that Carlton have been applying, they can finally get some reward. There's the fend, there's the drop, and Will White, a chance to kick his second, to make it a one-point game. He's been buzzing around the Ford 50 all afternoon. Will White, the Chemist Warehouse replay, you can see clearly a free kick. He kicks his second. We've got another cliffhanger here on a Sunday afternoon at Icon Park. First of the last. And it's got all the similar hums of last week. It was 83-82 at the finish. Oh, yeah. Will White kicked 2-1 last week. He's got 2-2 this afternoon. A resplendent... Sunny Sunday in April. We could just keep doing this every Sunday if well, the games just turn out like this. Book it in. Centre clearance is going to be absolutely crucial. Combat between Green and O'Keefe. Ferronato had nearly extracted it. Carl slides behind the contest here. Miller in the rock. Stubbings left it for Hurd, who was left to his own devices after Carl went behind the footy. Signorello gets his moment and takes it. And the Blues... Prepared to try something there with Ned Carl coming up to the back of that secondary stoppage, which left Heard free off the back, and he was the engineer for Port's first of the last. His eighth goal for the season, really important one, Signorello. And again, just the importance of winning that clearance. I like him playing a little bit high on the Chemist Warehouse replay. Absolutely flush that. So no goals in the first 15 minutes and then two in a minute. We're back at seven points. Miller almost broke away. It was a really important tackle. Andrew McCormack. Rotation is going to be so important. Players coming to the bench absolutely spent. It's, it hasn't been a warm day, but the sun's been out, so cramps starting to play a factor. I am sure. Ma. They take the advantage. Bins coming towards him is Moyer. Can he get involved in the final term? Bins keeps on running. Of course he does, and that is a lace out to Mac to McMahon. You love that delivery. Really important handball received as well. Aston Moyer got back straight to his feet and gave it to the running Bins. So to bring it back to within a point once again. Sprayed his last kick from 15 metres further out. Head towards time on in the final term. Drills it. One point game yet again.
pure class from Jackson Bins executing by foot, not on one occasion, but on two. And McMahon, beautiful set shot at goal. He can't stop that as a defender. Both teams with four multiple goal kickers. McMahon with one in the first and the last. O'Keefe favoured by that skewiff bounce. Chincotta to his knees, popped back up, got the hand pass towards Ferronato, who is being held ever so slightly by McComb. Takes the advantage, and rightly so. Phillips running away from McKenzie. The Blues in motion again. Rossman, a key fist on Moyer. They've got that matchup right. Rossman clearly with the athleticism to go with the silky Moyer down the stretch. After Carlton kicked the first four of the afternoon, it's been on fairly level terms since. Ferronado got it out. O'Keefe backwards to Phillips. Rossman can now fly. He misses it, as did Monica. Carl Nelson eventually gets it back to Carl, who would love nothing more than to put the Blues in front. Instead, he will level it at 90. 2-4 this afternoon for Ned Carl. All those four behinds to the left of screen. And we are tied up as we hit time on in the final term. Both teams looking for a win. Couldn't be a draw, could it? Every possible chance. It's been, that, today. it's been that kind of game. Who knows what happens from here? Oh, 50. Oh. Getty has it. Umpire calls Signorello back. Smart. Getty chips it up inside. It's going to be hard to see into the sun. Off the hands of Miller. Green, pinched by Moyer, was clever. Gives it off. Flying snap from Stevens. It's going to get there for a score at least. It's a minor one, and the Blues are back in front. Still plenty of time left. If you Port Melbourne, and I just feel like they've gone back into their shell with their ball movement. They haven't been prepared to take the game on the way that they were in the second and third quarter that got themselves back into the lead. It's stationary. Long kicks down the line. Maybe that will open the game up. That's it from Rankin. He finds Miller. Now there's some run and gun. Hooper oh, pops it up, though. Enormous turnover. Prout runs it back. Rossman. Oh, they the had the advantage on Carl. They'll try it again. Hurt has to mark and keep it in. He does. He's got Flockhart down the line as the logical option. Lemmy backpedalling to create a contest or maybe a board. Flockhart brought it to the front. Green got there and finds Hooper, who's immediately under pressure. Tumbles the kick forward. Signorello got away from Getty. Couldn't get away from Mills. Another stop by this Blues defence. Lewis's kick deep over Smith. Beat spins to the line. Critical from Michael Lewis there. Brownie left his man. If that got out and Signorello got it over the top, open goal port. Yeah, he's backed himself all afternoon and made the right decisions defensively, Lewis. Been outstanding down back for the Blues. No time to think about it in this situation, but it takes a bit of courage to leave your man when it's a one-point game. It certainly does. And you're into time on in the final term. Murkov down to Carl was good. Didn't take it cleanly. Chincotta. Moyer comes in over the top of Green. Jackson Bins just off to the right of that, as you can see, just stretching the he's, calves. He's the man doing the damage in this last quarter. Seven possessions, six kicks at 100%. Murkov into the path of Moyer. Paddles it on. Carl's been dangerous too. Ashton goes to ground. Stevens taken down. McCoy Moyer with a ball and all. Play on the call. Good pressure from the Blues. Bins, another touch. Tumbles it inside 50. Awkward bounce here. McMahon with the tackle. Carlton lurking. Carl. Nelson taken down. White loses his feet. Port, desperate defence. Give away a free kick in the process. Just a little bit sloppy. He was on his knees. He didn't need to get into his back. And Xavier Ma, who's become a bit of a Zach Fisher look like. It's, in fact, it's going to go to Will White. Here's another look. That's the tackle. A ripper. Outstanding tackle. And there's right one. He's, yeah, it's Kenzie the free just, kick is there. Just a bit overzealous in the tackle. Nudge, you're not sold? No. So Will White a chance to kick his third. 
and give the Blues a buffer as we approach the 24 minute mark. He does. A couple of big last quarter goals for Will White. He stepped up in the big moments. Chemist Warehouse replay. Seven point margin. They desperately need this centre clearance. They've been dominant all afternoon around the clearances. They need one more than ever now, the Borough. Carlton leading by the margin that they trailed at three quarter time. They've had the last six inside 50s to produce a couple of goals. Ma pushes them forward once again. Moyer against Highmore. And it was high on Moya. It's a critical win out of the middle. It just puts pressure, especially in tight games on defenders. They start to hold. And the umpire just sees those hands over the left shoulder there. Free kick again. While it's not over, overly poor from the defender it is there just going over the shoulder the first two of the day had six possessions in the first quarter has had six since for his third and to strike a critical blow as the blues seek win one of 24. Brownies, we see the free against Highmore in the Chemist Warehouse replay. Chasing the game at any level is never easy. You feel like Port have done all the work after conceding the first four. They get in front, but do they gas themselves in the process? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, the, the critical passage of play for mine was that Billy Gowers could have put them in front by 14 points. He, he goes back and misses that, and Carlton go up the other end and immediately score. Gives them a bit of life back. Ma. Carl. Nelson. Now they just... Blues finishing with a rush. Was it touched? It was. Well done, Rossman. They're running all over the top of them now, aren't they? It's superior fitness. They're starting to win the ball out of the middle. And Xavier Ma up to 27 possessions. As I said, Zach Fisher look-alike all of a sudden. Getting plenty of the football. He's been really impressive. Great to see him back after an ACL. O'Keefe almost. McComb sweeping through. There's Ma again. O'Keefe, Ramshaw, expansive handball, lovely step, Phillips. Oh, beautiful. To Kuypers. Absolutely beautiful. And if you're a Borough player, supporter, you'd be so frustrated. I mean, they, they're going to go zero and four to start the season. They've been so competitive last week, this week. Just haven't been able to execute for the whole four quarters at critical moments. Sung the praises of Blake Kuypers this afternoon, and rightly so. Chance to kick his second goal. Promising young prospect. 23-year-old from Rosebud. Chance to kick his second. This is right. Blues to their total of 15-15. They kicked in beating the Borough here in round 18 last year. Sam Green back to Rossman, trying to get it done from the back. Gowers trapped behind Lewis. Conlon just hasn't been his afternoon. He'll get a hold free kick. And he needs to work his way back off his line at high speed to put this through. 
and give Port some semblance of a chance. Four goals to one in the last quarter. Jacob Conlon. 50-plus goals each of the last two seasons for Aubrey in the ovens. And Murray, Flockhart flying at it, hoping for a fourth. Lemmy spikes it through. Carlton get ball in hand. They're 14 up and need to manage the clock. Harry Lemmy's had another good afternoon. He's been in a good battle with some of the borough key forwards, but he's, he's done what he's needed to do. He's taken some good intercept marks as he continues to learn his defensive craft. Lucky Young. Long and wide. O'Keefe over the top. Rossman inside to Hennis. Wheels and goes. Out comes Miller. Good spoil from Lemmy. Timed it well. Spills to Nelson. Now a race. Highmore turned around. Kuiper's putting in the big ones to try and run him down. Highmore gets a good bounce. Does it well. Squares it up. Uses Hurd while well played. Tom Highmore. Hurd will come away from defensive 50. Vickers leaves it. Picked off by Hooper. He's run down by Young. Affected the handball. Lewis to Chin Connor. Carl in front of Hurd takes the mark. He's had a huge afternoon. He's only kicked the two goals, but to generate six opportunities. Unselfishly gives it off. Nelson. Oh! Kuipers drops it. Back to Nelson. Blues are home. Oh, they did their absolute best to mess that up. Nelson ends up kicking the goal. He's kicked a couple and it was set up by Carl, who's been very lively up forward for the Blues. So they've done it by committee, Brownie. They've kicked 16. Three to White, three to Moyer, two to McMahon, two to Carl, two to Nelson. And good then spread. a bunch of singles. Yeah, it's been a, a really good spread across the board a lot of contributors this afternoon and while luke power would have probably wanted a little bit more consistent things through the four quarters they've certainly played in the right manner and generated plenty of inside 50s opportunities when they have gone forward they've hit the scoreboard alex murkoff to sing the song on his return to the game gets the clearance on this occasion Kuipers, Rossman got a fist in, Carl will go looking for Sam Green, roll over the top, camp and immediately lock eyes on the umpire. His request for a free goes unanswered. Tangle of fingers, Murkoff and Flockhart. Mars had a tremendous game. A match high, 29 disposals for Carlton's VFL vice captain. Six inside 50s. And 14 ground ball gets. Well, you feel like the Blues have shaded Port for much of the game, especially they established their dominance in that part of the game in Term 1. Heard in his 50th, tried really hard for the Borough. Shares to Rankin, bounces off his stomach. Monaghan gets him. Hennis, agricultural kick that gets to Miller. He dished for Curry, and that Curry went cold as Lemmy stops him just short of halfway. Murkoff. And the Blues are on the board for season 2024. Carlton collect their first win of the season with a victory over the Borough at Icon Park. It took four quarters of effort. It was a roller coaster afternoon. But in the end, it's the Blues. 16 15, 111. Defeat Port Melbourne. 14 7, 